What's up guys, it's Matt. I know you probably don't recognize me. It's been um, about 11, 12 months, just say a year, since I made a video. Um, the last 12 months it's flown by just like that. And uh, it's just been a whirlwind. I'm gonna put these glasses back on because it's really bright out today. Um, it's humid, uh, it's North Carolina weather. Uh, today's the last day of spring, but it's felt like summer for the last few weeks. Just been humid, hot, and crazy. But um, it's been 12 months of just up and down and COVID and I got a baby on the way. And so it's just been crazy and just honestly haven't had time and I apologize because I know there's a lot of stuff that, um, you know, we could have put out there and helped you guys out. But um, trying to get back on track uh, for those of you that watch and subscribe, thank you. Um, we get a lot of messages, emails and stuff throughout the week, throughout the month. Got a couple last week just saying thank you for our videos and they're watching stuff from a year ago. So trying to get some more content out um, content out there that um, you know is more up to date. So we, uh, we do have social media. So if you wanna follow us on Instagram, I don't use Facebook a lot. Uh, most of the time it's uh, show, uh, Instagram and stories and stuff on there. So, but anyway, um, what we're doing today is I've gotta find an elevation. And what it is, if you look behind me, there's a door. This is a loading dock area, and there's doors, one, two, three, four, five of them on this side, and there's about four or five on the other side. And so what we're trying to do, and I'll explain how we did it before, um, but what we wanna do is find an elevation drop, um, because this concrete here is actually sloped away from the building. And so technically I could go by the the plans and the drawings of the 2% grade slope. Um, but I don't like to, I like to field measure. And so to do that, what I've done in the past um, is actually, I would take a string line and I would run a string line, basically so that the steps, there's a platform that goes here. There's a um, 54 uh, inch wide platform and it's about 60 inches long. And then there's steps, so you would come straight out this door and then steps that come straight down and they stop. You can't go past the bollards. Those bollards are there uh, to protect any trucks from backing up. You see all these loading docks here. Um, there's about, uh, I don't know, 15 on this side, something like that. And so with the, the, these bollards, there's just still uh, six inch steel posts. That's what those do is protect the steps. Here, uh, you'll have another set. That actually, I think is gonna be a, a ground level. They'll, I think, probably put a retaining wall here. Um, but then you'll have two small ones down there and on the very end, there will be a area of rescue platform um, for handicapped wheelchairs, uh, stuff like that. And so that's, that's for another story. But um, what you're looking at here is a 48 inch threshold. So from that threshold to the ground, 48 inches. These are common. This is something we do a lot of, uh, especially for this company. And so what I'm gonna try to do, the problem is there's a drop from here all the way out to the end of the concrete. And so it is generally a 2% grade. Now you could do the math, figure it out on paper and draw that out. But if uh, they get off, which they can, um, you know, it throws your, um, your numbers off and it throws your accuracy off. So then if you get off the bottom of your stringers cut incorrectly, you're going to have a gap and it just, to me, it just doesn't look very good. It's unprofessional. So what we like to do is actually measure in the past by myself. Most of the time I would take a string tied to some kind of block, whether it be a cinder block, uh, a, a heavy piece of wood, and I would run it from the bottom here and I'd pull it out and I'd hold it up until it was level. I'd put a, a laser, um, a line level on it and actually hold it up until it was level and I'd measure the difference from the, the string to the concrete. Generally, it's around an inch and a half to two inches of drop, I think, um, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, maybe three. But um, we'll find out today and I'll show you exactly what it is. I, just, I can't remember because it's been about a year or so since we've done any of these. Um, so what I decided to do was invest in a uh, rotary laser level. 
And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what I've got and kind of go through what I'm gonna do with it. And so what I've got here is a tripod. And you wanna be very careful with this because this top piece, it comes with this plastic cover and you wanna be sure you keep that because and it just screws on this this here stays on the bottom but this plastic cover protects this top this piece here is precision precision ground um, for your uh, laser to go on and so when you screw it on you don't want anything to be in the way and have scratches and burrs and all that stuff um, because it affects the accuracy of your laser so you want to be sure you keep this um, what I'm gonna do is just set it down here for now and um, I'm gonna kind of guess where I think that needs to be and it doesn't matter where you put this. And then what I've got here is the laser. This is a Topcon RL H5. And it comes with your laser. Um, you wanna be very careful with this. You wanna make sure that um, you're not turning this, dropping it around when it's on. Uh, when it's off, you know, it's a little different because it's in the case. It doesn't matter if you turn it sideways. Uh, it's locked in place. It can't go anywhere. And what I was saying is, you know, this is going to sit on here. So you want to make sure there's no debris, any dirt, you know, whatever on top. Same thing here. And then you're just going to set this on here. I'm going to turn it this way. I don't know exactly what it is, but I think general rule of thumb is if you're <clears throat> within eight degrees of level, it will automatically um, level itself. If you're over that, then you're gonna have to correct it. Um, it'll automatically level itself and start rotating. So you know if it starts to rotate and you see the little red beacon, that everything is level and it's ready to go. So it comes with that um, and then it comes with of course your directions and so forth and a really, really nice case and then the receiver and so basically you've got this this is the receiver and then also you're going to have a great rod now there's a couple different types of grade rods the main difference is the height of them. Uh, this is a 20 foot grade rod. Uh, you can get a 16, 20, and a 24. And what I'm actually probably gonna do in the future is get a small non-adjustable for doing stuff like this where I'm not going uh, up or down a major um, difference. But what you're gonna do, the, the major difference is, A, of course, the height of it, but also it comes in inches or in tenths. Now this rod here is in inches because of what I'm doing. I'm not doing actual grading. Um, I'm trying to find, technically it's a grade, but it's a slope. And this one works better for me because of this application, but you can also get a 95% of grading companies are gonna use a tenths rod. And the difference is it reads in tenths instead of inches. This is just a normal, just like a normal tape measure. Um, and then you've got your receiver that picks up the, the laser. So what I'm gonna do is, I'll show you on here. This is the front of it and it's just a simple green switch. And you see it's not moving yet. You hear it making noise. And bam, there you go. So it's within that eight degree threshold and it's turning. So that means it's auto level itself and it's rotating and it's ready to project the laser for the receiver to pick up. So what I'm gonna do so I'll just set this right behind here so you can see that. And then, 
same thing here just a very simple green button beeps it goes through its little process to calibrate shows you your battery level same thing on here it's got a, a battery level to show you what the the level is and then you're just gonna set it doesn't matter where you go i could be over here and well it just worked out it was really close you hear it beeping all right so what it's gonna do it's gonna you're gonna have two different beeps or actually three when it starts to beep fast you're high so you hear those really short quick beeps that means you're high and then if you hear the longer slow beeps that means just like that it means you got to come up it means you're low when you get the solid tone that means you're on grade with the, the laser now one other thing All right, so we're locked in. One other thing is you'll see there's a bubble on the front of this. You want to be sure that you're pretty close to being plumb, meaning square this way and square this way when you hold it. You don't want to be holding this rod like this because it won't read accurate. So you, it's got a level on it. You just look at the level, hold it there, and you're gonna listen for the tone. Now there's a screen on the front of this and there's also a screen you can look at on the back of this that has arrows. Those arrows are gonna tell you which way to go and when you when you grade out, it'll have a line that'll pop up to show you're on grade or you'll hear the solid tone. So what you're gonna do is, like I said, this is in inches, so we're gonna explain it in inches. You've got the big red numbers that show you your foot marks. In between is just one, two, three, just normal inches like a normal tape measure. So, for instance, four feet. So, you've got these marks in between, so that's four foot one. And what that's going to do is you're going to be an eighth, eighths of an inch. So, if I go to the bottom of this line, that's one eighth. If I go to the top, that's a quarter. So, the bottom of the line is one eighth, three eighths, five eighths, seven eighths. Quarter, half, three quarter, and one. So just like on the tenths, if, if you've got, um, it, it does the same thing because it points to the bottom, so it has an arrow, you see that's pointed? So the bottom of that is seven eighths of an inch, the top is one inch. This, the bottom is three eighths of an inch, the top is half all the way up so you have one eighth and 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 in this case working with one eighth of an inch is absolutely fine that's within definitely within tolerance and um what you would be reading so if, here it would be um 48 and a quarter or 48 and a half whereas if you have a tense ruler you're going to be reading um 4.05 or 4.25 or 4.75 etc um, whereas this one you're just reading uh, you're reading tenths and hundreds on a tenths ruler this one you're reading um, like I said eighth or, or quarter um, three eighths half uh, five eighths three quarter seven eighths and one so what we're gonna do and I can do this either way I can start over here at the bottom or I can start up there at the top at the upside of the slope and all I'm gonna do and you do have to have this pointing to the laser. So as you hear it beeping, you hear that beep? Now, turn it around, it's not gonna pick up. So there's nothing here to pick up. You have to have this pointing at the laser. The laser has to be pointing this direction. Um, and you can be on either side of this and it'll still pick up. As soon as I turn it around, it's gonna lose that laser. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go right here, because this is, four, I know 48 inches, I've already measured that, it's 48 inches to the threshold, so that's where my platform's gonna start. So I'm just gonna 
go down until That's on grade. I'm going to turn it around. And I'm hopefully the sun doesn't block this out, but I'm going to read. As you see, there's a little arrow here, and that's where I'm going to read my mark. So I'm just going to pull this down because I know where I'm at there. And I'll show you because it's a little easier. So this is where I was, the top of this mark. So it just happens that it's actually a great point. That is three foot eight and one half because you're at the top of this line there's your the top of this line is going to be uh, eight inches that's a quarter and that's a half so three foot eight and a half so i need to write that down We've got our two dimensions. This is our upper dimension at the building. And this is the lower dimension at the bollard. And what we want is the difference. So three foot nine and seven eighths minus three foot eight and a half is three foot one and three eighths. So 36 inches, just say 37. So 37 and three eighths. What you're looking for is the difference. So the difference in these two is one and three eighths. We don't care what the 36 is, it doesn't matter. We're looking for the difference because here is the drop. We need to get from here to there so we know what angle our steps are at. So our drop is gonna be one and three eighths of an inch. So from this point here to right there, there's an inch and three eighths difference in height elevation. So the water runs off, that's the whole purpose of this, to run the water away from the building or they'd be flat and uh, level one and three eighths of an inch drop from there to there now the only other thing i need to do is measure the distance that way when i draw it out on my floor just to be sure it's 160 inches 
So over that 160 inches from there to there, it's 160 inches, there's a one and three eighths of an inch drop. Now what we'll do is we'll take that, we'll put it in our solid works and we'll get our fabrication drawings from that for our um, stringers. The platform that sets here there's going to be a platform my hands there there's a platform that comes out like i said it's about five by five roughly it's level so when we build it the platform gets built level the stringers are the only thing that hit that unlevel ground so they're the ones we have to adjust so what we do is we put that in solid works and it punches out exactly what angle we need to be the slope and everything on our stringers so we know that we when we cut those and they hit the ground on the concrete here there's not going to be a gap so you won't have any kind of uh, gap at the front or back of your stringer like i said it just looks very unprofessional if you pay attention to stairs you'll see it because um, people don't take the time to figure this out so what we'll do like i said we'll put that in our solid works uh, it'll it'll punch out exactly what we need but i will lay this out in my floor and how i do that is i'll take a chalk line i'll pop a chalk line it'll be longer than 160 i'll go about a foot extra each way and i'll pop a chalk line that is level and then i'll come back with another chalk line that has the distance marked from uh, here to here of 160 inches and i'll have it touching at one end and at this end i'll have an inch and three eighths difference in the chalk line so you'll have two chalk lines look like a long piece of pizza and that is how i will verify that everything we've done is correct and our stringers exactly fit where they're supposed to go all right so there you have it that's something simple that i think will help a lot now this is probably not the most uh definitely not the cheapest way to go <laughs> it's probably the most expensive way to go about finding this like i said you can use, we've used an eight foot level before um and we just pulled off eight foot from the building and just kind of figured from there we've used a string line with a line level on it and actually pulled the full dimension it's really hard to do by yourself uh, this is something you can use a rotary laser, laser level by yourself. doesn't matter how far you have to go. The distance on this one's like 2,600 feet, and it'll measure within an eighth of an inch. Uh, so they're extremely, extremely accurate. And like I said, I, I don't mind going by drawings and blueprints, but I, I do like to field measure. Uh, we do that in pretty much everything just to be sure. We dry fit a lot of stuff just to make sure before it's powder coated. That way you're not wasting time. Uh, and of course, everybody knows time is money. So if you can be more efficient and get these accurate measurements from the beginning, you know it's gonna save you a lot of trouble down the road. Uh, so this product, it's a RLH5A. Um, it's, you can order it online. Uh, I, I purchased, purchased this actually from an engineering firm locally that supplies um, grading stuff like this, grade stakes, uh, marking tape, flags, uh, engineering products, stuff like that. They sell all of this in, a, in their store. They also do full-scale blueprints, drawing, engineering. They're a PLLC um, certified company, uh, so they can actually stamp drawings um, for structural and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so this product, you can get the rotary laser level, comes with the receiver, the tripod and the grade rod. That's all you need for this. And it's gonna run you about a thousand bucks. Now you, you can find some cheaper, you can find some more expensive. Um, but I wanted Topcon just because I know that's top of the line. Uh, you can go to Lowe's actually and get for probably like five or 600 bucks, you, they make a Bosch um, setup that's similar. Um, I don't know the accuracy, I don't know how far it goes, but I know Bosch has great products. Um, I've actually got a small, um, I'm gonna call it a laser line level. And basically what it does, it emits a line. I think it's 180 degrees. It'll go horizontal and vertical. Uh, you can switch it for one or the other or it'll do both at the same time. You see a lot of uh, sheetrock guys using it. Um, acoustical ceiling guys use it. Uh, the problem is out here in the daylight when it's really bright, um, I might be able to see it today because it's kind of overcast. We just had some showers come through. That's why I'm sweating like a pig is because it's really humid. Um, but this is what you see is, is raw. I'm, I, one of my goals in these videos coming up is to show you true stuff, whether it's screw ups, 
mistakes we make, whatever, because I want it to be as realistic as possible so you can see that there are flaws in what we do, mistakes we make, it costs money, it costs time. Um, but anyway, so I'm sweating because it's humid, but um, it's really overcast today, so I may be able to see the green line, but for the most part, it works great indoors or when it's not as bright. Um, but for out here, stuff like this, it's really hard to see is one thing I've noticed. And um, so I just wanted to get something that was more efficient. Plus we've got some, some small grading jobs that we're doing that uh, I'm gonna use it on to uh, find grade as far as how much to cut out of dirt and stuff like that. But So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to shut this off. Um, if you've got questions or comments, please leave them. Um, I'm new to this. This is something that's fairly new to me. So, um, you know, it, it's not something I'm using for grading stuff, but these things are, are great for multiple uh, projects and, and different things. So uh, it'll definitely help us out and, and make us a lot more efficient. So I'm gonna show you how to shut this down. It's exactly the same way as you turn it on. And all you're gonna do is this green button here. You're gonna turn that and you'll notice that you, you saw it stop so what's gonna happen is it's automatically gonna lock itself in place. So this here, that's the rotary laser, and you're gonna see that it's locked in place and now it's safe to pull it off the stand. All it is is just a, a, a thumb screw pretty much underneath that holds it on. And I'm going to just take that off. Let me get the box over here so you can see. extremely nice case which I love I'm a huge fan of cases everything I have has cases because it just protects and helps last keep stuff a lot longer so um, once again make sure you've got this clean this is clean and this is just gonna go straight into the box like this you're going to pull your receiver off and the exact same thing is you're just gonna reverse the operation you've got your grade rod here that has a case with it and same thing with this, all you're gonna do, green button, it beeps twice, and it's off. Uh, this is the, the bubble I was talking about, the, late, the um, level bubble. You wanna make sure you keep that in the little red circle as best as you can. If you're off a little bit, it's okay, um, but you wanna keep, you know, just to, to keep the accuracy, you wanna make sure that's le level and what I call plumb. Plumb means it's level both ways. So that also fits right here in the box. Um, it comes with um, directions as far as how to help calibrate it and stuff like that. And then, like I said, keep your black cap here. You're just gonna set that back on and screw it back on the top. That way it just protects that precision ground. Alrighty, so we had to come to another job site and reason being this is exactly what we're measuring the grade or, or finding the grade or the slope to build. This is exactly gonna be the same. These are some, we, like I mentioned, we did about a year ago. Uh, same company, same exact, pretty much configuration. There's a 2% slope from here all the way out to there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I took some quick measurements, basically just drew out the stringer because I've got templates made from where we built these last time got some aluminum ones I've also got some cardboard my paper's not cooperating and so I just drew out the stringer got my measurements because I can go back and find the templates and speed the process up a little bit in building these stringers and what I mentioned in having gaps if you'll look at the bottom of that stringer in the concrete there's zero gap here um, you might have an eighth of an inch three sixteenths at the most um, if something gets off or, or something like that, but I try to keep it within an eighth um, because you don't notice that. It's setting flush on the ground. Even though there's a slope here and there's an angle, it's still setting flush, nice and solid, so you have a solid base because the only thing holding this is two legs, which have four bolts in each leg. There's three bolts through the channel going into the wall, and then there's anchors, just one on each side. You can't really see, they're underneath the the galvanized bar great steps here. Um, but this is exactly what we're building. So I just wanna come over here and check that because that'll help us out in building these because we've got um, dimensions, angles, sketches, everything from, from these 
that we should be able to use if I check and I'll see what the slope is on this one that we made and then um, should be able to pretty much make them the same. So um, this will this will help a lot. So you want to try to keep up with you know previous work you do because when you come back and do these again, uh, it saves a lot of time. Make templates. Like I said, we've got some out of aluminum and we've also got some cardboard ones that uh, really helps to, to keep on hand. All right, so here's my two cents on what I'm probably going to get a comment about is I can't afford that. I'm just starting out. I get it. Trust me. I was there when buying a $2,000 welder was extremely hard because I was just starting out. Um, you know, I've talked about this in videos before. It's not a matter of I can't afford that. It's a matter of how can I afford that? And that's the way I look at everything. What do I need to do in order to be able to get to where I need to be? And so for something like this, you know, to me, it's it's not a lot of money anymore because stuff is so expensive. Um, a thousand bucks is, is nothing really in, in the grand scheme of things because um, when you're doing business and you get into commercial projects like this, this is a multi, multi-million dollar project. Um, we're just a very small part of it. We do the entrance ramps, um, all the steel you see around these loading docks, the angle embeds, we did all of those. Um, it's, I don't know, probably 20,000 feet of angle embeds we did, uh, three by three by quarter with um, studs on them. And then also we just did, um, uh, cut a bunch of rebar for them. It was about 15,000 feet of uh, number six rebar. Um, a lot of concrete here. Um, and this is about a 300,000 square foot building. But what I'm getting at is commercial industrial stuff, the amount of money that is spent on these projects is absolutely just astronomical. Uh, I, I don't know, and I'm not even gonna guess because I, I, I don't know what the number is on this, but I could find out, um, you know, because I'm, I'm in with the GC or one, there's actually multiple GCs on this right now because they're in a transition period of the uh, infrastructure GC that was doing the, the grading, the loading docks, the structure, and then there's going to be what's called an upfit GC who takes over the inside portion once everything else is done. They're here on site as well. So, um, but but going back to what I said, it's it's in my opinion, it's not a matter of I can't afford this. Uh, that's something I don't like to hear. It's it's a matter of how can I afford this and. If it means, you know, you look at that and say, okay, I need a thousand dollars. Well, what have I got that I can sell? Whether it's a piece of equipment I don't use, I don't care if it's a bicycle, a motorcycle, a four wheeler, you know, you really have to prioritize what you want and where you want to go and the direction you're going and focus on that. Um, Cause there's always a way to afford it. Um, if you want something bad enough, uh, there's a way to get it. And and that's what I've always looked at in business, and that's where I'm, why, why I'm at, to where, why I'm where I'm at today, um, is because I've always figured out a way. Whether it's selling something we don't use, whether it's selling something, upgrading, and you know, flipping something, making a little money to to do it, or it's just a matter of working extra hours to be able to get that. Um, you know, for for guys that comment a lot on here and reach out to me and say, you know, they're just getting started or they've been doing this on the side. That's exactly how I started. Was a side hustle and I knew that it would be full-time eventually um, and it came quicker than I thought just because uh, I got tired of being laid off and tired of working at other places that I didn't enjoy and so there's always a way if you want it bad enough um, that may mean working 50 60 70 hours for a few weeks to get it but once again you know it's it's, it's how bad you want it so uh, especially right now it's out there um, there's a massive amount of work and so if you want to you know if you're in the side hustle thing there's plenty of work out there whether it's subbing work from other companies I've talked about that before in our videos but um, anyway I hope this has been helpful like I said I'm learning on this uh, laser rotary laser thing um, not something I've used a lot and don't have a lot of experience so I watched YouTube videos on how to do it how to use it before I even purchased it just to be sure it was something that was gonna be efficient for us and something we could use, and I truly believe it will. So I hope this helps. I hope you'll subscribe and, and, and watch our other videos, and um, hopefully here in the near future, I'll be posting more videos uh, each month, and um, 
thanks again for watching. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Um, go back and watch our old videos, um, and hopefully you'll uh, you'll get something out of that. And like I said, feel free to reach out. Uh, try to respond to emails and, and so forth that we get and comments. I try to respond in some way, as long as they're constructive. Um, you know, these videos aren't for everybody because there's people out there that already know how to do this, um, and there you know there's people out there that are going to have negative comments no matter what. So. Um, if you have something positive to say, feel free to do it. I'll respond best I can and help you out as much as I can. So hope you guys have an awesome day and um, we'll see you on the next video.